I'm joined now by Brian Kep of Regions Private Wealth Management. Brian, thank you so much for joining us. Well, thank you, Jen. It's a pleasure to be here today. And Brian, I wonder, are younger generations more or less willing to take over the family business now versus in the past? You know, that's an excellent question. And I think that obviously we need to look at that on a case by case basis. But one of the things that we are seeing in regards to both family dynamics and the capital markets is that while transitioning businesses generationally, there's about a 30% chance of successfully transitioning a business from first to second generation. And then that percentage drops steeply to about 12% from second to third. So what we do know sociologically is, is that transitioning a business between family members becomes harder as time goes along. So empirical evidence suggests that anyway. You add an additional dynamic, which is number one, uh, probably more and more children obviously are advanced degree today. Our society is a lot more transient. Children have opportunities today to do a variety of different things. And so with those additional options, what we're seeing is not necessarily children not wanting to be part of the business, but just looking at other things to do as, as far as who they are as their identity and, and building their own career in another way. Sometimes they may leave and come back. So, what that really suggests is thinking about strategic planning in a very fluid manner, in a very customized manner to meet the needs of the family dynamic. Because not one size fits all, as you mentioned. Most definitely. I, I venture to say that, that there is no one size that fits two. Every case, every strategic plan needs to really be laser focused on what's most important to the family, what's most important to the business to make sure that it gives the best chance of success. And what is most important when it comes to succession? Well, it, obviously it's gonna vary based upon family, based upon industry. But the first place that you always need to think about and look at are the goals, intentions, and aspirations of not only the founders of the business or so whoever's in control of the business, but then ultimately, what do the children wanna do? And I'll kinda of illustrate it this way is that mom and dad may own a business and they've always thought, okay, their daughter or son is going to be the heir apparent. And if they don't want to do that, invariably what's going to happen is that likely that transition will fail, the business will fail, and there's a lot of indirect consequences that occur. Number one, what we do know is that family business owners generally, the majority of their net worth is tied up in the family business. So that would result in a significant issue in regards to retirement of the founding generation or whoever's in control. Secondly, the legacy for children in and outside the business. So the most important thing in regards to strategic planning is really getting down to what is real, what, what, what is reality, and being honest and transparent and then building around what that situation is to put into place the best structure to, to allow for life to occur. And what is reality? I like that. And when should families begin to have these conversations about what is reality? Well, I'll answer the last question first. Tomorrow. Come and see us tomorrow. I, I, I really believe that because having the conversation to, to break the ice, even if it's just a 30-minute discovery discussion, is an, an initial start which will result in additional questions and considerations. So families need to have that conversation immediately and they need to have it ongoing. One of the things that we often talk about in the portfolio management world is that the buy and hold days are over. You, you don't buy a stock and necessarily just sit on that stock. You tactically look at it in regards to the full picture and you make decisions based upon the economy, your overall goals and, 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 and where that portfolio ultimately is headed. You need to think about your business and also its ultimate transition plan the same way. Are there any guarantees, Brian? Well, as far as guarantees, there's very few in life, but one of the things that I will guarantee is that 100% of businesses will ultimately transition. So whether you choose it or it chooses you, my advice would be is you get control of that situation and you choose the direction ultimately as far as how your business will transition and what that succession plan looks like. And if that succession plan 
uh, involves selling to a third party, what are some of the key considerations there, say a private equity fund? or Again, that's an excellent question because one of the things that a lot of clients discuss with us is, I want to sell, but I'm a family business and I want to transition uh, business interests to my children and can I do both? And the answer is yes, it's all about timing. So when you think about transitioning or selling to a third party, the first thing that comes into play is what's your timeline? So thinking about ultimately when would you like to transact, much like we talked about the market, you can't time a sale because market forces won't allow for us to do that. So that's when getting great advice from an investment banker uh, or a, as well a, a specialist that handles those type of sales to put yourself in position so to create the market for your business. So that may be in a year, it may be in five years. Uh, there's a lot of things on, on that front to consider as well. Value drivers, what are the things that make your business valuable? So number one, it's probably you as the key person, but also the ability to step back to say that business can run on its own if I'm not there because that's what a potential buyer is going to purchase. Okay because you may or may not be there anymore. You may not want to be there. So that goes into ultimately your goals, intentions, and aspirations. Secondly, the people. You know, are the key people uh, in place? Are they handcuffed? What is that buyer going to purchase? Third, is it a strategic buy? Is it a competitive buy? Is it an auction buy? All these things come into play and the goal is to drive price in that subsequent scenario. So you have fair market value and then you have price. That subsequent difference is putting more money in your pocket and ultimately transacting at the highest level. But getting back to the family, can you do both? The answer is most definitely yes. So when we think about transacting it to a third party at price value, we also think about transitioning to children at the lowest defensible valuation, which by the way is a tough conversation to have because when you sit down with a business owner and you say, you know what, I want to devalue your business with discounts by 30 to 40 percent, they're going to look at you and say, but that's my business. You know, what, what are you talking about? The fact is, is that we've got so much gift and estate tax exemption that we can use to be able to transition interest to children without tax repercussion that what we ultimately want to do is have a defensible valuation uh, to be able to accomplish that. And that may result in our fair market value being discounted to be able to move those shares, um, whether it's outright or into trust, to best set the family scenario perfectly. So in that situation, it's great to talk to your wealth manager, it's great to talk to a transition specialist, it's great to talk to obviously your CPA and your attorney. Set the stage for the right sequence of events to put yourself in a position to be successful. To time it correctly, you want to have the family talk before the sales talk. Because if you set the, the, the deck the right way, you may be able to transition businesses, business interest for a discount and then sell it at a pricing value. What can happen there is a family can then realize the risk that they put into that business and also the, the hard work and sweat equity with obviously the, the subsequent liquidity event, but as well you've been able to potentially move interest to your children uh, likely at less than uh, fair market value, which is an excellent opportunity for families looking at doing some very advanced level estate planning. And what are some of the major tax considerations as well? So before a parent or a controlling shareholder gifts or sells a portion of their company away, they really need to think about, well, how much income do I need to derive from it for retirement? Because you can't finance that. You can't finance retirement. So if, if you gift away too much of your business, your kids will love you, but you may be short in regards to the needs that you have for retirement in the next phases of your life and the legacy planning that you want to do. So the best thing to do there is to think about a cash flow analysis. How much income is the business driving? How much in expenditures do I need? How much in expenditures do I want? And then be able then to really back into algebraically what is the best deal for our family as far as a potential gift of shares or sale of shares uh, outright or to trust with those discounts, but making sure that, hey, you know what? We built this business, we want to be able to enjoy the next phase of our life. How do we make sure that we don't, in essence, give away too much? And finally, Brian, do you expect to see an increase in small business sales given the current business environment? Most definitely. I would tell you that I'm prepared 
to have a lot of conversations over the next, not only the next year, but over the, probably the next three to five years. And there's a variety of reasons for that. Number one is that we've always talked about transitional wealth. And we've said, okay, the baby boomers are going to be retiring and they're going to be passing along legacy interest to Gen X, which is my generation, YZ, the millennials, um, and whoever's next. Okay, So we, we know that ultimately that's going to happen, just like there's a 100% chance that your business is going to transition. There's a 100% chance that ultimately the boomers are going to transition wealth down to, to, to the next generations. But the issue has always been when and how that's going to be done. The when question is, I've been practicing for 20 years. When I came out of school, when I came out of law school, they were talking about this 20 years ago, but then 2008 happened. And a lot of boomers were caught, and it was, my goodness, my retirement goals are now mm -hmm. short. I need to rebuild my business. Well, they've done that over the last 10 years, and here we are again. And so now, with that second chance, what we're seeing a lot of boomers saying, one, I'm going to sell, I'm going to be, and I want to, I want to be at a, at a pricing value to be able to enjoy the next phase of my life, but also create the legacy that I want to leave. Secondly, I want to be able to pass that business along to my children or be able to do a hybrid strategy as we've discussed. So in reality, it's timing and preparation has set us up for really that transitional phase to begin. And it's a very exciting time because the tax laws have never been better, in my opinion. The precedent is set as far as how to do it. And it really just comes down to the challenge. And the challenge question always comes back to, what do you want? What do you need? What are the goals? What are the aspirations that you have? What is the mark that you want to leave? And that's something that we like to have in regards to a conversation with each and every client that we have. It's in our DNA. And, and I stress that that should be an expectation of any business owner that we have the privilege to work with. Well, certainly a lot of considerations with this uh, massive generational wealth transfer on the horizon. Thank you so much for joining us, Brian. Well, thank you.